pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Please note the council's in full attendance. I want to welcome everybody here at our January 3rd meeting and wish everybody a happy new year. Um, looking forward to this year. First uh, item on our agenda is items from council. Can I pull D6, please? Pull D6. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Anybody want to pull or discuss? I have one question for staff, uh, if I may. I don't want to. There is an item on here uh, regarding mowing. I don't want to pull it, though. I just have a question. Um, maybe uh, Lynn or whoever. Sure. The, the Drainage District 3, mm -hmm. which uh, I had talked to staff. I may not have talked about it much up here. I don't recall. They were perhaps going to assist with some mowing in the city. Has that transpired or...? <coughs> The, uh, they have mowed one portion of the Union Pacific ditch, which is basically uh, that section of it that runs from Del Mar East over to kind of behind the Sunoco building, about a 900-foot uh, stretch. They mowed the tops of both sides. They have said they, they can't mow the, the side slopes or the bottom because they don't have slope mowers, but they did mow the tops. Mm. Uh, they did not pick up trash first and so I understand that there's some shredded up cause a problem uh, hmm. paper there but that that's what's been done so they did that one time yes sir okay 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 that's that's what I wanted to know all right anything else council before we move on if not we'll open uh, citizens communication if anyone would like to come forward and speak about anything whatsoever now would be the time Okay. Don't don't see anybody. Uh, we'll. Oh yeah. I I'm sorry. I <laughs> our former mayor Armstrong snuck in. I just want to recognize him and welcome him here. Uh, Will, good to see you. I I uh, I didn't see you come in. So thanks. Good to see you here. Okay. Uh, so, citizens' communications, I don't see anyone coming forward. We'll go ahead and close that at this time and move into our agenda. Bless you. And let's see. No ordinances. Just the consent agenda. Minus six. So, go we ahead. We have five items remaining on the consent agenda tonight, which will be approved by a single vote. They are, first, the approval of minutes of the regular meeting of December 20th, 2016. Second, a resolution approving payment of $26,480.97 for annual dues to the Golden Crescent Regional Planning Commission and declaring an effective date. Third, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a real estate sales contract for the sale of property located at 8505 North Navarro for $1.2 million to Schuler Development, LLC, and declaring an effective date. Fourth, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a renewal of the contract with benefit administrative services for administration of the city's medical and dental claims in the amount of $255,437 and declaring an effective date. And fifth, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a renewal of the contract of the mowing and drainage ditches and outfalls with WW Services of Victoria, Texas in the amount of $315,440 and declaring an effective date. Make a motion. We approve uh, consent agenda items D1 through 5. Second. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. Those items pass. D6. Item D6 is a resolution approving deductive change order number 4 to the 2014-15 reclaimed seal <coughs> project in Meadow Creek, Hamlet, Springwood, Eagle Creek, and F.B. Lowry to delete the Springwood portion of the project, decreasing the amount of the contract by $548,550, bringing the new contract amount to $1,878,502, authorizing the Director of Public Works to execute the change and declaring an effective date. I move to adopt. Second. Discussion. Yes, sir. On this project, this was a project that some months back you brought us a baggies of slush, kind of, sort of, for the foundation. 
Uh, right. Oh, for I, the I believe that was Woodway and Bridle Ridge that mm -hmm. was the, the but but this is similar in that uh, we felt like once we got out there to actually do the work, getting preparing to do the work, we did some cores and the it's this base there is just not suitable to be reclaimed. It's gonna have to be completely rebuilt at some point when funding's available. And so what we recommend then is is deleting that reclaim work out of this project and then of course that money will be deallocated and made available for the new CIP that will be coming forward in March uh, to discuss. I was thinking it was the same project and I was just wondering. So only the amount that was going to be used in Springwood got pulled out so that's what the $500,000 is? That's okay. correct. Okay. And in I March you'll present to us what seal code project we could pull forward? We'll redo the whole year. CIP. Yes, the whole CIP. And that money will be put into the CIP projects. Is Springwood going to be part of that CIP list this year or not? I don't know. Lynn's working on it, and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so. we're not ready to make rec We're not far enough along to make recommendations at this point. It is one of the ones that we're evaluating, considering. I want to say thank you for um, doing the testing. We've we've learned our lesson, and we didn't have to learn it more than once. So thank you for that. Yep. Okay. Any any further questions for Lynn or discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank e six you. passes, and we have a resolution. E one is a resolution approving the purchase of two 2017 Harley Davidson FL HTP police motorcycles from Harley Davidson uh, of Victoria for their low bid of $48,730.12, accepting a grant from the Victoria 100 Club in the amount of $25,000 to put toward the purchase of the motorcycles, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to accept the grant and complete the purchase and declaring an effective date. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. I see the chief. I think he wants to say a few words. Do we, do we have questions first? or? When did I we discontinue the motorcycle patrol? Remember? I want to say it was about 10, 15 years ago, but I'm not positive on that. I was in the 90s sometimes. Yeah. I don't remember yeah, maybe exactly. Maybe even further. It's been yeah. a while. I had that written down somewhere, but, I'm just but it's been a while. You say you're reinstating the um, motor patrol component of the police department. These are just two motorcycles. Are you going to be adding any more to that in the future, or are you just planning to keep it kind of for right now? The plan is to add these two now <clears throat> and then take a look at it and possibly add two more in 2018 for a total of four. Good, very good. I have to look at budgets in 2018. Yes. <laughs> that's why he looked at me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Were they, part, were they part? I mean, the difference, was it in this budget year, or was that just... Something that we had to pull out from somewhere else, other department. For, for, for we were, we were oh, trying to be right. very sensitive to the budget, and okay. uh, was this a very minimal impact on the general fund, um, and that's one of the reasons why you know, I, in, if you take a look at how we went about uh, purchasing <coughs> these, um, we we were very fortunate to to receive a generous grant from the mm -hmm. Victoria 100 Club, who are tremendous supporters of public safety, and uh, stepped forward and said, uh, you know, we'll support you with this reinst reinstituting program, and then I just took the balance from uh, asset forfeiture funding. So oh, with okay. a minimal impact on ongoing costs for the, uh, d that we hit the general fund, but it's very minimal. Okay, very um, good. So I understand, so Victoria 100 Club is participating here at this, at the amount of $25,000. $25,000, yes. A representative of the 100 Club is here. Yes. Yes, at least stand up and stand next to you for a minute. Howard, Howard Good, <laughs> president of the Victoria 100 Club. I'm sure many of you already know Howard. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, again, I just want to say, uh, with Howard standing here, a tremendous supporter of public safety. Um, and I know that uh, the fire department was here a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, and uh, you know, they also accepted a grant from the 100 Club. So, But with Howard. Yeah. Uh, just on behalf of the uh, board of directors of the 100 Club and our uh, members, I want to say thank you. Uh, for allowing us to uh, help uh, in the acquisition of the motorcycles. Uh, as Chief said, we're, we're very proactive with uh, the 
fire department and the police department and all first responders. And uh, as I was telling the chief a while ago, we're still the best kept secret in Victoria. So if you're not a member of the 100 Club, I uh, sure would like to have you as members. It's, it's only $100. It's been that way ever since we started. It probably never will go up. And that $100 gets you a, a pretty good meal at the country club uh, for being a member. So, again, thank you for the opportunity to work with the city of Victoria. Thank, thank you, Howard. And how would someone reach out to you? Is there a web page or a yes. Facebook? Or yeah. It's, just, uh, just search on Victoria 100 Club. Victoria100club.com, I believe. Okay. We're okay. getting into the... The social media a little bit more. We're <laughs> going to have this a Facebook site, and, and we may even be tweeting one of these days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Got a lot of old white-haired people like me that don't know how to do some of those things. So. Anyway, thank you very much. Before you sit down, explain the mission of the 100 Club. Not everybody understands what the purpose is. Well, initially, back when it first started, it was to help the uh, families of, of a fallen first responder. Uh, it started back in Detroit. That's where the first 100 Club started. Uh, Houston uh, was the second one, so Texas has been very proactive in the 100 Club organization. Um, we have, through bylaw changes, expanded the, the 100 Club to, to do things like the acquisition of equipment for the police department, the fire department, the Texas Alcohol Beverages Commission, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, we've, we've helped all of those entities. We've purchased life insurance policy uh, for uh, first responders. Uh, this coming February, we're going to have a, a very internationally known speaker come in to talk on terrorism. We'll be holding a training session the next day for continuing education for the uh, first responders. So uh, we're broadening the borders of what we can do to help the first responders. We're always open for, uh, you know, requests and grants. Uh, like I was telling you, Ms. Garrett, uh, our funds have done very well this past year. Hopefully that trend will continue, so we'll have plenty of money to, to help out. <clears throat> uh, every October, or actually in August, we send out a letter to the first responders if they have any needs. We get a lot of requests. We can't help everybody we would like to, but uh, this year the board of directors felt very strongly about some of the things that, uh, especially in the fire department's case with the drone that they're getting, uh, one of the things that we asked Mr. Drake to do, if, make it available if at all possible to the other agencies, so it'll, in his words, be a regional asset. So if the police department, or the sheriff's department, or the fire department, or some other agency needs to use it, if it's available, uh, it'll be able to be utilized in, in, in multi-purposes. So we were very excited about being able to, to help in that area. Wonderful, wonderful. And I just want to personally thank you, Mr. Good, for your involvement in that organization. And what a lot of people may not know is you've been involved in many in Victoria and, <laughs> and quietly served on a lot of boards and, yeah. and contributed your time. So, And that's very important. So thank you. Thank you very much. You bet. You bet. Okay. No further discussion or questions. We still need to vote, right? All, right? all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right, city manager reports. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is a recognition of for Scarlett City Secretary Office, and I see April has come in, where they've received the twenty. <coughs> 2016 five-star exemplary award, and I've got some notes here because I want to make sure I get it right, uh, Scarlett. This is awarded by the Texas <coughs> Department of State Health Services for Vital Statistics Unit. We are the registrar uh, for the county. Uh, so uh, we're one of 20 registrar's offices in the state of Texas that received this award this year. We're one of 11 cities which is, you know, when you look at the state of Texas where you have 254 counties and over 1,000 incorporated cities, that's a nice feat. So, um, but I want to tell you kind of what it takes to get that because I think that's what's important. And I want Scarlett to stand there and, and receive this recognition. But you have to register death certificates within an uh, average of 10 days to that's one point. Another point is on remote, remote birth access systems where we're, when you do your search ratios, you have to be at 75% or higher, meaning that 
75% of those searches, you're getting that certificate for that person that has come in for that remote certificate. Birth registrations have to be registered 100% of the time within one business day. Those are feats that are, you can see why there's only 11 cities in the state of Texas that get recognized. Those are tremendous feats. So, and there's some training recognition, but Scarlett has been city secretary since 20, 2001, not 21, right? 2001. <laughs> Out of those 15 years, the office has received 12 years of recognition, 16 ex exemplary. Job well done. Thank you very much. I can tell you, I would we would not have won this award without April. <laughs> She's got some uh, a nice job to continue doing that. So nice challenge. <laughs> Great foundation you've laid there, Scarlett. <laughs> and I have to say, you know, as as most of you probably know already, Scarlett will be retiring mm -hmm. soon. So this meeting and one more meeting next mm -hmm. in two weeks. So we're going to miss her a lot, and uh, I can attest to what. City manager said it does. They have a good department, and those they're always hitting on all cylinders in there and getting that work done. And that's that's no small feat to come in with a smile every day like they do and deal with everybody that walks up to that window. So thank you so much. So okay. So uh, the next one is Jarrett's going to do an update on the Unified Development Code, which is part of the Comprehensive Plan 2035 for us to work on. And there's an ad hoc committee that's being formed. And Jared wanted to tell you what was going on with that. Yes, ma'am. Um, as you all may recall, back in October, uh, when John Kaminsky was going over our action agenda for implementing uh, or beginning implementation of our Victoria 2035 plan, one of the items uh, was the development of a unified development code, which would uh, result in the review and, and, and kind of pulling together of all of our subdivision and development regulations uh, into one document. Um, our subdivision and our main subdivision and development regulations were adopted in 1992, and we've amended them uh, many times over the last 25 or so years, uh, but there hasn't been a comprehensive review of those since that time. So that's what this committee will be uh, tasked with. Um, as Ms. Uh, Garrett mentioned, it's an ad hoc committee. It'll be three planning commissioners and two city council members. Uh, from planning commission, uh, the chair, Mr. Greg Spears, has agreed to serve along with Marianne Wyatt and Jill Trevino. Uh, from City Council, uh, Ms. Scott and Mr. Bachknight have agreed to serve. So that will be our ad hoc committee, and we'll be getting to work here fairly soon. Any questions? Just a comment. You know, uh, Ms. Scott and Mr. Bachknight have both served on the Planning Commission, so they're very familiar with those <coughs> development codes. So. Right. Bo both of them are previous former mm -hmm. chairs of mm -hmm. the commission, so we thought that would be appropriate and um, Get very good. In. Yeah, that's uh, those are five good choices. There, you guys are will serve very well. I think so. I almost wanted to be on it, but you know, I think it wasn't a good idea because it sounds interesting. But I know you've got an excellent group there. So well, it will all come to, back to you guys as a whole to right, look at. <laughs> right. So you can you can chair that group, those no, meetings. No, I'm gonna, <laughs> I have every faith in those five names, especially you two. You know that. So okay. Uh, that no further business. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have an executive session. That's right. So that adjourns our meeting. Thank you. What time? Twenty minutes.